Greetings, humans. I'm here to introduce you to VRChat. This is where you will first appear when you log in. This is VRChat Home, the default location where you will always spawn unless you replace it with something else. The first thing you should do is go through your settings, as with any other game. You should look at your audio volumes. This is what I go with. At oftentimes I have play with the world volume depending on where am I, what's the levels of the world. They're not all even because it's all user generated content. So you, you never know where you will land. Usually between 75 and 100 is my go to. Further, you have a holoport, which is basically the if you're on VR, I should say. Holoport is the teleportation mode for movement. Comfort turning is snap turning that will snap you in degrees. If you're experienced VR user, you probably prefer smooth motion. So you would want to disable those. These are enabled by default. You should also disable personal space. It's a um, kind of bounding box around you. If someone goes closer than certain range, they will simply disappear. You should enable allow untrusted user URLs. This really applies only to video players. So for streaming, uh, video streaming or music streaming and other things. Uh, at DevConf, we haven't decided yet on how we will be streaming the presentations. We may be using untrusted URL. Trusted URLs are the usual suspects, Twitch, YouTube and other services. Another important thing in the settings that you should visit is safety up here. I use my custom settings um, that also reflect the performance, the hardware performance that you're on. If you're not on powerful machine, you might be a little bit more restricted with what you can enable. By default, you would be here, I think. <laughs> What this means, these are different user ranks. I'm a trusted user. I've been in VRChat for a really long time, even though not really, but that's another story. But you will be maybe visitor, maybe new user very quickly. User takes a little while and further it slows down. It's kind of like levels in an RPG game. This serves to protect you from random people, new users who don't know how to use VRChat in the first place. Oftentimes, these kinds of people use very invasive, intrusive avatars that are either really huge or they have a lot of effects or shaders that can shake your vision and do other kinds of unpleasant things. So while you get used to it, it's best to simply uh, keep only these three and I recommend this for the first two ranks as it is by default. As you go higher, you see that things are starting to appear. What is audio? Audio is um, various effects that people can have on their avatars. For instance, if I'm a dragon, I can scream like a dragon, you know, big loud roar. That would be this audio toggle. Custom animations. I would recommend enabling these as soon as possible because they're not very intrusive and they disable way too much. For instance, you see I have some armor, but I can change it to a different clothing. That is also custom animation. So you wouldn't even see people in their correct clothing they, they are wearing. Next, particles and shaders. These may be really intrusive. These are the most intrusive pieces of the whole avatar setup that you could have because they can change everything they can even render images directly in your vision completely blinding you that's why you wouldn't want these below half the rank basically because there are also malicious people who will create a new account go into a public world and try to do 
nasty stuff. They get quickly banned, create a new account. They never progress through the ranks, usually. My setup kind of reflects everything enabled above user and disabled under user. Uh, shaders and particles also affect the performance a lot. Animations, audio, user icons do not. Voice, you wouldn't hear anyone if you disable it. Avatar, that's basically a very basic, um, just a mesh without, without sh nice shaders. So it will, like for instance, my armor wouldn't be shiny. It would be just kind of like gray, um, boring kind of thing, but you would still see. Uh, so if you're on a potato computer, you might want to set up your custom settings the way where you have, are showing only avatar, and you hide particles and shaders, and you could still enable animations. That's what I would do, for instance. Friends are people you've added as a friend, so you can also enable everything for those, maybe. Maybe not. To access user-specific menu, you open up this little pop-up menu, then you can click on someone, and here we can see buttons like hide avatar, show avatar, or use safety settings. You can also ch turn off their voice, change their user-specific volume, or you can block them. Uh, if you see someone who is really intrusive, annoying, harassing someone, that's what the button is for. You can report people as well, which I'm not gonna do because this is my friend. <laughs> now that we've seen how to enable and hide avatars and handle safety settings, there is one more thing I would like to show you. Here in the corner of safety settings, you have performance options. Here you can hide avatars based on download size. For instance, my very custom and complex avatar while it's not very heavy on performance, it has a lot of different clothing, a lot of swords and different items. It is th over 30 megabytes. I've said it's 500 because I don't care. You can set it to 20 or something lower if you would like to actually have useful limit here on download size. This will help you if you have slower internet connection because every once someone appears, every time someone appears, it may lag your, con your game if you, your connection is very slow. Minimum displayed performance rank. So it's excellent, good, medium, poor, and very poor. This shows how many polygons, how many materials you do have on your avatar and other things. So if you don't care, if you have powerful computers, set it to very poor. If you do care, I would recommend setting it to poor. Um, that's the biggest step is between these two. Medium is medium to poor isn't that much of a difference. Uh, dynamic bone. The menu sometimes jumps away. Safety, performance option, dynamic bone. This is, uh, as you can see, I disabled these limits. My hair, it's dynamic bone. Things that are physically simulated that move. And if I do this, you can see the wings move as well with physics. That's also dynamic bones. Uh, it's CPU heavy. Dynamic bones are CPU heavy. Shaders, particles, GPU heavy. Last but not least item on these settings that you may have noticed, Real user height, that's not actually real user height. This setting reflects arm span. So as you can see here, if you are in full body tracking, so you can move your legs. Real user height is your arm span when you are in T-pose, from left arm, right arm. It's not about height. You want to have it set to correct value that when you stretch your arms, they are nicely straight, not bent and not too short. <laughs> so like if you were too short, you would stretch your arm and you need to drag your whole head, your whole torso to the side. That's not good. It's very avatar dependent, user generated content, different avatars, different 
uh, proportions. Next, how do we join worlds? You can search for worlds in worlds category using the search. You have all kinds of recommended or suggested categories. You can favorite worlds. For instance, I have this faculty of informatics here, our venue. I can favorite it and add it to one of my categories for different worlds. Sometimes it doesn't load, so it's showing a zero, but I have some. <laughs> but it's fine. Let's ignore minor bugs. You can either directly join a world or you can drop a portal, which can be used by others as well. Portals disappear in under half a minute. However, by default, what you can see here, this is a public instance. It means anyone can join, join it. You might want to create a new instance, set it to friends plus, that's any friend of a user who, can, who is already there can join. Friends of friends, basically. Friends only, only your own friends. Invite plus, anyone can invite people. Invite only, only you can invite people. Most commonly used is Friends Plus. For DEF CONF purposes, we'll be using Friends Only. That means, in order to join our instance of Faculty of Informatics, you must be a friend with our DEF CONF account. Joining our instance of DEF CONF, you would go to Social, and here you would find uh, our DEF CONF account. Our DEF CONF account will be set as Blue State, like me. Blue means that anyone can join, you don't need a permission from the user. However, the instance limitations still apply. By default, you are green, so you would receive uh, invite requests. By blue, they are automatically accepted. Uh, so you would find our DevConf account, you would click on it, and then you would have a button here, join. I can show it to you on someone else. For instance, here. You would have a button join here. This person is in a world that is either friends, uh, either uh, invite only or invite plus. That means I cannot join them. Or a friends only world of someone else, not their own. So I have a request invite button here. When I click it, it will send them a a notification that I would like to join them and they can invite me. You can invite people using the invite button. Uh, instead of this request invite button, you will have a join and that directly joins others. Let's see if we have someone in a public world. See, Walter here is in a public world whom I can just directly join and I will immediately teleport over there. And that concludes our tour of VRChat. When you get to the DevConf venue, you will appear in a spawn room. Do not get frightened. Yes, it's an empty cube where you have nothing. <laughs> Here's some information that you should really read. When you are done, click to teleport to the venue. You click this button, you will appear in the Faculty of Informatics. Thank you very much. Bye. Here is the exit button.